So today I have what we have with us Mr. Peter Lieben from the Jewish Legacy Group, um, who's going to uh, give you a presentation about some of these unfinished lives. He put together a little program for us. So this is all for you, so you can follow along. It's also yours to keep, um, so you have it. And I know that you all had to get releases signed, so if your parents, when you go home today, are wondering you know, what it was you did today um, and what the program was about, you can also share this information with them. Throughout the presentation, um, Mr. Lieben is going to stop and um, just solicit some comments from you, or I will do the same. Uh, we're really interested in getting some of your feedback and your reactions. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Lieben um, and let him uh, start his presentation. And I'll, you know, I'll be here. So. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, I want to just first extend my thanks to uh, Mrs. Dickerson. I happen to live in Natrona Heights, and uh, I've been working on this project for now uh, three and a half years. Uh, it's uh, Unfinished Lives. Uh, it's originally an exhibit, an interactive traveling exhibit that we still, we still are funded, trying to fund it. We have our plans to build. But short of that, because that might take a while, we all felt that, you know, why wait until the whole exhibit is complete when there's so much information and education we can get out. So hence, I am here today <laughs> to uh, discuss Unfinished Lives. Um, <clears throat> Mrs. Dickerson mentioned about, I asked her about the Holocaust knowledge that you may have, you know, at this particular point. And um, she said that basically you might have, you know, knowledge of Anne Frank, you know, in her story. And that was really interesting to me because that really is significant in unfinished lives. The numbers that you hear, unfortunately, or fortunately, the way you might look at it, you'll be seeing horrific in your lives, horrific scenes in these camps and in, you know, the terrible degradation of human life. And <clears throat> Unfinished Lives uses a tenant in uh, Holocaust education, which is essentially to convert those horrific numbers, like six million lives lost, including, by the way, 1.5 million children who perished in the Holocaust. It's, it's grotesque. Rather than uh, put too much emphasis on that, we thought we would put together six extraordinary people who had tremendous talents and gifts in art, in literature, in music, uh, one tremendous world-class track and field athlete, and couple them together and present it to young people in the context of it had nothing to do with being Jewish. They were just caught in the wrong place in history at the wrong time. And it could happen to any of you. If you were, you know, in a period of history that was um, dark and cruel, and <clears throat> you were basically caught up being who you were, you know, whether you were Catholic, Jewish, you know, if, if the prevailing uh, government philosophy, you know, in terms of um, genocide, was was going on you were a victim you were just you know your number was up you know and you had to be on the run you had to hide like Anne Frank you had to uh, <clears throat> you know really every minute be aware that you know you could be picked up and 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 more than detained uh, perhaps tortured sent to some sort of ghetto uh, where, you know, Jewish people were forced to go to, such as the Warsaw Ghetto, and there were other ghettos. And, and um, it was demoralizing. They lost everything in their lives.
about what we can learn from and why it's important to preserve those kinds of things. I mean, a hundred years from now, why should someone look at what you have written? Um, you know, why should we look back at what um, Selma has written and what can that tell us about, about the world and how that changed? Um, even if we look at what uh, at Ilsa Weber's song, how can that tell us about how the world has changed? Jocelyn? Well, I think it's, I think it's fascinating that like, you look at, even though it was so long ago, like, kids still have the same emotions as they did back then, as they do today. A mother is still going to love her child the same as she's going to love them today. A mother will still sacrifice for her children the way that, that she'll sacrifice today. So I think it, preserving it shows that even, like, we live new lives and we tell new tales, we always keep the same, like, mind and heart. Jordan, what did you want to say? I was just going to say, like, uh, the emotions that they convey and stuff like that, it's, it's um, like Josh said, it's just relevant to, like, today's world and stuff. <clears throat> but it also gives you, like, insight on, like, how stuff was back then, maybe, and the situations and how they're the same as they are today, like Josh said. Um, and, like, her music and the poetry, I feel like that's, like, a release for them. So they have all of these emotions and all of the, the traumatic experiences that they're going through, and this is a way for them to try to put it into words and to release it from them in a sense so that other people later on, if, if it did get out, so then they could realize what they went through and how they felt during it. I feel like it's really touching. I also think it's really fascinating that they all could express themselves in like different art ways, like through poetry and songs, because you would think that in the dim situations that they were in, the confinement that they were in, there would be no inspiration, there would be no ability to express how they feel except for sorrow for them to be able to channel it through the art. I think it's really, really fascinating. I think like there was so much hatred going on in the Holocaust, that was like what so much of like the shame of it came from, but like to be able to listen to a song like that or like discover that kind of art and find that like people still have the same emotions and feelings then as we have now. Like kind of teaches the lesson that like people aren't so different yeah. from different places and times. Like we're all just people and we all have emotions and we're all in it together. It's it's cool to look at it like this because you don't just see it in a history book. Like oh this is what happened and when, but like you actually can see how they went through it and how they got through it. Yeah. I think the individualness 
of that is really, um, really profound. It's not, as Mr. Lieben said, it's not about looking at that big number. It's about taking these individuals and looking at individual lives, which I think is very powerful. Go ahead, Kristen. Um, I like how, like through the poetry, you can really visualize like how they were living and everything. <laughs> Yeah, and like Brett said, the textbooks really don't do it all justice. Like seeing individual stories really gives more detail and like you just have to, like synthesize more. Hi, Kathy. Um, I think that these people are really relatable with all their emotions and everything that you can see in this like these works that they've done, and like it really shows that um, like our elders and like the people that we should be respecting, like. They went through very similar experiences that we did, and the people from our past had the same experiences. I also think it shows like um, how this strong they were. It shows like really good character when you're able to, uh, to keep up like your talents and your your loves, even though they're in <clears throat> the hard times like that. So. Yeah. Good, I also like admire that we are like looking at what people were able to make from this like tragic event because. I mean, when we learn about it in school, it's like it's really heartbreaking and it's really, it really like hurts. But when you look at like people who have been able to like, even though like the poetry and the songs are sad, they're still like meaningful. So it's like good to look at like people, like I don't want to say became successful, but like they had a, a good peace of mind to bring from like, all the bad. And remember them as they lived yeah. and not as they died. I think like the music and the poetry and everything they wrote kind of gives us a sense of like these weren't just names and faces at a certain time. These were actual people who went through stuff like this. It's also really heartbreaking to think that they had such amazing talents and that it, they were taken away from them as teenagers and young adults and stuff like that. Because yeah. I, I don't even, I mean if they were making such beautiful pieces of art when they were that young, then imagine what it would have been like if they would have been able to have a chance to grow up and continue to do that. You know, if Selma had gone on to have a, a career as a poet, um, or if Ilsa Baber had gone on to write you know, scores of, of uh, songs. into perspective because you don't realize how much it affects people who aren't directly like involved like in the concentration camps so just seeing somebody else that's outside of it and seeing all they went through and for him to feel like bad enough that he had to take his own life and it, that speaks volumes. Not necessarily with him personally, but in his art, he's almost like saying like, I feel like he's being kind of, I don't want to say ignorant, but he's almost saying like life goes on, people still live, after, even though like bad things happen. Like he showed a lot of um, what I like to say like in the shadows, like uh, what the underneath of people that like no one really showed any emotion and things go on and people still live their lives. Right. That was a human emotion. I thought maybe you were gonna. <laughs> it seemed to be rather dark. Like some of the pictures did have brighter colors, but it still seemed like a dark kind of theme. What do you think made made the Nazis declare his art degenerate? Um, from what you know about about Nazis and their goals, what makes that? I mean, why does Kirshner not fit into that? Um, sort of what the Nazis' plan was as far as as Germany and. Nazis like want people to think that Germany was like a fantastic place and everything was like going great and society was like semi perfect. Yeah, it's but all about that. Was a little bit more. Um, 
critical of society and like this like for example like the city painting that he did was like of two prostitutes and like very claustrophobic and kind of negative toward the city so that was sort of against the Nazi mindset and is that bad to portray those elements of our society no Josh well I also think that's what Brett said like the way he painted he, like you could tell that like, yeah, he did use bright colors once in a while, but you could tell by the expression of, like, the people and the things and how he was trying to portray things. Like, it wasn't happiness, it was kind of just miserable. Like, that was got, like, a miserable feeling from them. Like, the defini definition of expressionism is, is how it's supposed to bring out, like, the emotion of it. It's not, like, the city painting, for example, it shows the city, obviously, but it's really, bringing out that emotion from it. Like it's not like the way people it. lived or the way that they felt about living in the city, right? Yeah, like it's not just a picture of two prostitutes and some guys. Like it's like more than that. Right. I'm gonna take away how real the people are that were part of the Holocaust, how their lives really were. Like, this really was an amazing experience just to see their lives and how they took a really awful situation and kind of made something out of it and made something that should live on. I think like before I always thought of the Holocaust, like the victims as like such a huge number of people, like, a, like groups, and then now they look more like individuals with like their own lives and accomplishments and work. I'm probably going to take away the fact that they didn't just die in concentration camps or places like that. Like they, some were so like mentally affected that they got to them. Uh, when people think of the Holocaust, you know, uh, normally they don't think of all the strengths that these people had. They just think of all the bad stuff. So this presentation really uh, showed me like their uh, skills and talents and it, the Holocaust didn't stop them from doing what they loved. But, Kristen, um, I just think it's really amazing how out of, like everyone said about how bad the situation is, you can take something and make it like beautiful, like what you have to offer to the world. And I just, I don't know, I was just really weird. I'm not going to think of this anymore, it's just people who lived and died in the Holocaust and like they're gone and they're dead. Like, they're living on in their music and their, their art and everything. Like, they're still going. take away like some pity I had for the Holocaust. Like I no longer see like, oh that was awful, let's move on. I think, oh, that was almost revolutionary for some people and what they brought from it. Yeah. I think um, the bravery um, you know, for Nussbaum to say, don't let my paintings die, show them. Um, <clears throat> Selma to say, you know, not to fade like smoke and leave no trace. Uh, Ilse Weber to write about her experiences in song the bravery of all of that, knowing 
that in the face of death that you might not live to see your work appreciated. You might not live to see the generations enjoy your art or your music or your poetry. Um, and so the bravery that we can take away from that. This song was written by Ilse Weber in the Theresienstadt ghetto. In 1939, Ilse Weber, she managed to send away her oldest son, Hanusch, from Prague to Sweden. Three years later, she writes, letter to my son in Theresienstadt. Hanusch Weber, he still lives in Sweden. Ilse Weber and her youngest son, Tommy, they died in Auschwitz in 1944. Hanusch Weber and Ilse Weber's grandchild, Tommy, is here with us tonight. Letter to my son. My dear son, three years have passed today Alone you left for a world so far away I can see you at the station there in Prague By the open window we say goodbye Your brown and curly head is leading through You cry and beg, please let me stay with you Please let me stay at home with you To say farewell was hard for you to take You were so little frail and only eight And when we had to walk home without you I felt my heart would break in two I've cried so much and wish that we were near Still I'm happy That you are not here I'm happy You are not here An unknown woman Took you as her son She will go to heaven For what she has done I bless her with every Breath I take Be good and love her For my Life here is dismal now and full of fear They took all that we owned and had so dear Our house and home, everything is gone They plundered us, nothing's left alone They took your train set and without remorse Even your brother's little rocking horse Even your brother's rocking horse we couldn't keep our names They stripped us bare And gave us numbers round our necks to wear Marked like cattle, I bear the disgrace If your father could live with me in this place Your brother cannot even stay with me I am as lonely as one ever can be I am as lonely as one can be You're still too little To grasp what it means To carry the pain of Loneliness and tears Body against body In one room Lying together In sorrow and gloom Are you healthy? Are you learning well, my dear? Now no one sings Your lullabies, I fear you there before my eyes and once again I feel you at my side imagine when we meet again one day you will be wondering what I say you have probably forgotten all your German and Swedish is too hard for me to learn wouldn't that be strange it would be fun all at once to have a grown-up son Do you like to play with tin soldiers today? 
Harrier Barracks is the place where I must stay. With cold, dreary rooms and dark, damaged walls. No sun, no trees, no leaves at all. I work here as a children's nurse, comforting and helping so they don't feel worse. I keep guard and watch them through the night. The room has just one lamp, a feeble light. I sit in silence and protect their sleep. And every child is you whom I can't keep. So many thoughts and dreams that we were near. Still I'm happy that you are not here. I'm happy. You are not here A thousand torments I could still endure If a happy childhood is for you and sure Now I must get some rest It's getting late I wish that I could see you For one moment But dearest son I can only write to you Letters of longing that will not get 